Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Hurricane. Welcome back to the Minnesota Gophers Dynasty. The Gophers are back at home in week 5 as they play their second Big Ten game against the 1-2 Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Minnesota wrapped up their first Big Ten game last week with a 41-20 win over Ohio State. Again, the defense looked dominant and we saw a good performance from the offense. Can the Gophers keep it going here in week five as the game is underway? And here's Eric Lemon from his own end zone. Lemon up to Hashmark, a spin move and wrapped up shy of the 20 as Tim Gallagher in this Gopher offense takes the field. Two rushing touchdowns last week for Gallagher, but he hands off on first and 10. It's running back Matt Pierre inside as he picks up five. Pierre comes in close to 400 yards on the year. Now throwing for the first time, and Gallagher throws out wide to Clint Porter. That's a gain of 11. Still no touchdowns on the year, by the way, for Porter, as Pierre gets the carry once again, but this time the Scarlet Knights are ready, and he only gains one. On second down, it's a fake, and Gallagher is stopped in the backfield. Excellent option defense from Rutgers, as they force a loss of two. Three wide right, third and 11. Gallagher fires, and that is caught by Brandon Jones, and that throw really didn't have a lot of strength behind it. Look at this wobbler as Jones had to come back for it. The Gophers punt and here comes Rutgers, led by quarterback the junior Jeremy Houston who hasn't thrown an interception this season. I'd love to see that change today. It's a keeper on first and 10 and Houston runs right into Calvin Hall. An early loss of two at the hands of perhaps the team's MVP so far. Second down and 12, four-man rush, and the pressure's there! Down goes Houston! Excellent spin move from Big John Rice. The defense chance already in full force, as it's third and 19. Pass middle caught by McNamara, and that won't get the first down. The Gophers play soft, and only allow 13. Back on offense, it's Gallagher in a two tight end set. Fake inside to Matt Pierre. Now a dump off, and this is Michael Williams, not Marcus Williams. I'm sure I'll get them confused at some point. But Michael Williams is a true freshman, and that is his first reception. Gophers stick with that two tight end look. It's a handoff, here's running room, and Matt Pierre with a jump cut and a first down in Rutgers territory. 14 yards to Matt Pierre. Two tight ends on first and 10. Gallagher fires to Wilkerson who makes the reception. First down again for Minnesota. Gain of 11. Now the Gophers go three wide. Four man raw, short throw, that's Marcus Williams this time. And that catch is good for seven yards. Gophers on third and four stick with the three wide set. Quick throw from Gallagher, caught by James. A spin move near the 10. 11 yards on a Minnesota first down. James had an excellent game last week, by the way. We'll see if he continues his play. Off the fake, and Gallagher's in trouble. Three Scarlet Knights in the backfield, and he loses seven. After the sack, it's a third and goal. Four receivers against the Blitz. Gallagher steps up, fires to the end zone, and is almost picked off by Reggie Crowder. Gallagher thought he had Clint Porter, who was open momentarily, but that bullet pass won't get the job done. Gophers now lead 3-0. As Houston hands off to Marco Neely, the true freshman tailback, and he gains 10. Neely, one of the prize recruits of last year's recruiting class, is starting with two other running backs injured for Rutgers. Houston to his right and finding Rhodes this time. Good coverage from Vince Walker, but Ryan Rhodes has the gain of nine. Rutgers needs one. Give to Neely, a stiff arm, and a big hit from Josh Mackey. He just likes to hit people. First and 10, Rutgers. Houston fakes, throws left. Rhodes is wrapped up. That's Calvin Hall in the open field. Again, the crowd cranks up the volume on third down. Rutgers needs eight. Extra man brought on the blitz as Rhodes has the short catch, and that won't get it done either. Only a gain of three for Ryan Rhodes. Go for ball as the first quarter is winding down. On the carry, Matt Pierre trying to cut this inside, but Rutgers is there. Four defenders, as a matter of fact. T.J. Jackson checks in on second down. Gallagher over the middle. There's Wilkerson once again. And another Minnesota first down. Gain of 12. Two receivers right for Minnesota. As Pierre cuts this right. Nice juke still on his feet. Across midfield. And Matt Pierre with a gain of 21. The vision, the agility, the quickness of Matt Pierre makes him such a special runner. He doesn't need the elite speed. You don't play football in a straight line. 
First down and 10, three receivers. Inside handoff again, Matt Pierre with another good carry. Gain of seven. Third down and one, Minnesota. With two tight ends, they'll block left for Matt Pierre who wants the outside but is not going to find it. But he does get the first down regardless. Again, the double Williams formation on first and 10. Gallagher lobs deep downfield and Michael Williams dropped the touchdown. Great touch on that pass from Gallagher as the safety missed and Williams just flat out missed the play. On second down, the Gophers go back to the running game. Another nice cut from Matt Pierre, but a flag is down. It's a gain of eight. That actually never happened because this clipping penalty wipes it out. And they're flagging Nick Wilkerson. Thanks, Nick. Gophers backed up outside of field goal range, perhaps. They need 17. Plenty of time as Gallagher fires complete to Brandon Jones, and that gets 14, so the Gophers will have the field goal try. 6-0 Minnesota after two Shane Wood field goals. Rutgers ball and Marco Neely meets Reggie Carter. Half human, half brick wall. I think he's been getting some tips from Josh Mackey. Third and seven Rutgers. Four-man rush, Houston over the middle, and there's Marco Neely for a first down. It's a gain of 14 yards. Near midfield at second down. Five-man rush, Houston short, cut by Washington. That's a gain of five. Two receivers left on third and three. Houston under pressure, he can't escape the pocket and he's sacked. Flushed by Carter, the sack goes to Jason Harper. The Gophers are taking over as their offense has easily outperformed Rutgers to this point. However, it's only a 6-0 game in the second quarter. Gallagher steps up to evade pressure and he goes down. Nobody open downfield, that was David Burks. Four wide for Minnesota. Gallagher with time finds a wide open man. It's Lee James for another go for first down. Four receivers once again. Four man rush. Gallagher has to run out to his right. A tough spot for the lefty, but he doesn't care as he finds Nick Wilkerson. 30 yards downfield. Great throw and a tough one from Tim Gallagher. Two backs next to Gallagher on first and 10. He fakes to Pierre and now will go down again. Only a three-man rush, but it's still another sack for David Burks. Rutgers could be blitzing here again. Third and eight, and they are. Gallagher again out to his right. No receivers over here. He has to run it, and he will pick up the first down himself. Another good play outside the pocket for Gallagher. Back to the ground. A sweep for Matt Pierre this time as he can't get outside. That's a loss of three. Cunningham on the stop. Jackson in the game on second down. Gallagher under pressure, but still throws a dart to Jacob Smith for a 17-yard connection and a first and goal Gophers. They'll stay four wide, 30 seconds left, and down goes Gallagher, a free rusher. The nickel corner wasn't even showing blitz. Gallagher never saw it coming, and the Gophers now face a third and goal from the 13. The hard count isn't working. Gallagher takes the snap. Nine seconds left as Gallagher throws to the end zone and out of bounds was Clint Porter. Another missed opportunity for his first career touchdown. And the Gophers settle for another field goal. We now go to halftime with the Gophers up 9-0. The Gopher offense could not find the end zone in the first half, but the defense once again is playing dominant football. They've only allowed 8.3 points per game and they have their eyes set on lowering that number. Rutgers football to begin the third quarter as Houston hands off and Neely won't get to the line of scrimmage. That time it was Kyle Wright. Even our backups can make plays. Second down and 12. Four man rush as Houston over the middle and for the first time it's Wendell Moss. Their star receiver has his first catch. Second down, Neely gets the carry. Cutting this back to the right side as Neely picks up enough for a first down. Go for secondary playing off. Houston on second down to his left. Caught by Crosby this time at the Gopher 35. First down Scarlet Knights. Putting together their best drive so far. Now off the fake, he was running room for Houston. Excellent block as he runs inside the 20. It's a gain of 20 for Jeremy Houston. Rutgers has a first and 10. Houston under pressure and for the second time he's sacked by John Rice. Minnesota again has Rutgers in a third and long. They rush four, drop back into a zone. 
Houston to the sideline. That's Moss for a first down inside the five. What a throw and catch. Moss has been almost silent against the man coverage, but here he gets open against the zone. First down and goal. Go for his blitz. Throw is almost picked off in the end zone. That was Mike Moore jumping right in front of the tight end. He read that the entire way. Just could not secure the football. Second down and goal from the three. Houston facing a rush. Under pressure. He's sacked again. Gophers with lockdown coverage and a sack for Tony Hunter. Looking for a big red zone stand. Third and goal. Houston under duress and sacked once again. The Gophers continue to apply pressure. This time it's Jason Harper. Rutgers is on the board. 9-3 Gophers. Their first play of the second half is a sweep to Pierre. And the ball's out. Rutgers scoops it up. Turner inside the five. Rutgers will take the lead. With the extra point, the Gophers will be trailing for the first time all season. Matt Pierre lost the ball and Rutgers capitalizes on the key mistake. And right now, Pierre is being checked out on the sideline by trainers. TJ Jackson is now in the game. He gets the carry on first down, sweep right. One in the outside, Jackson cuts it up and picks up around five yards. Two receivers right on second down. Facing the blitz, Gallagher hit but still finds Marcus Williams for a first down. Porter, James, and Wilkerson, the wideouts. On the carry again, TJ Jackson showing off the speed. He's across the 50 and picks up a few extra with that nifty spin move. There is your update on Matt Pierre. He has suffered a concussion and will not return to today's game. Minnesota down by one here in the third. Gallagher on first down, fires complete. It's Clint Porter, and that will be a gain of 20 for another Minnesota first down. Gallagher throwing well against the blitz on this drive. Now a speed option. Here are the wheels from Jackson as he can't get open space. Gain of three. Five wide Minnesota. Gallagher to the air. Four man rush. A short throw again. Porter. First down. Gophers inside the 15 yard line. Gain of 10. Brandon Jones slot right. And Jackson runs that way. Tries to make a move and fails to make a man miss. Gain of five. Two receivers right. Now it's a fake to Jackson. Gallagher rolling left, has a man open, doesn't want to throw it. He tucks and runs in for the Gopher touchdown. The lead is back in the hands of the Golden Gophers. As Gallagher again trusting his legs instead of throwing on the run. Going for two, Minnesota wants that seven point advantage. Gallagher throws complete, it's Brandon Jones. 17-10, Minnesota. With Minnesota back on top, we'll see how the defense protects the lead. The blitz forces a short throw, and Washington fights through the tackle of Mike Moore and rumbles for eight. Third down and one. Gophers stack the box. They blitz. Quick throw caught by Washington, who beat Mike Moore on coverage. That was a cover zero blitz, and Rutgers countered nicely. 3-3-5 look for Minnesota as Mark O'Neilly is wrapped up by Greg Kelly and Vincent Walker. As the third quarter winds down, it's third and six Rutgers. Houston wants the run, he has space and picks up the first down before being brought down by Reggie Carter. Minnesota again blitzing on first down. Throw left, that is off the hands of McNamara and almost picked off by Mike Moore, who dropped it again. 23 seconds left in the third. Houston under pressure, that ball's out! Recovered by Tony Hunter! First and 10 Minnesota as Reggie Carter forced the fumble. He can rush the passer too, folks. Right through the right tackle. And Carter gets the ball back in the hands of Minnesota. On first down, quick screen. Here's Clint Porter. Good block from Lee James as that helps Porter pick up another first down. Fourth quarter is now underway. First and 10, Gallagher underneath. First down for Lee James as he picks up 10 more. Split shotgun look on first and 10, and a rare carry for Chauncey Thornton, the second year tailback who picks up six. Minnesota goes back to a four wide look on third down. Gallagher needs four. He fires, and what a catch made by Lee James, leaving his feet. He was hit by a linebacker in midair, and he still hung on. James is easily one of our most improved players. First down, now it's a catch for Marcus Williams as this will be good for eight. 
Back to a split shotgun look on second down. Fake to Thornton, running right. Gallagher cut from behind. Again, he didn't want to give the ball up. First and goal. Gallagher just gets the playoff. And he lobs to the end zone. Intercepted by Rutgers. Gallagher wanted Clint Porter, but Crowder had the tight coverage. There was no chance to complete this play. Big mistake by Minnesota as it gives Rutgers a chance with a one-score game. This pass is caught by Ryan Rhodes to set up a third down and short. From the shotgun, Houston hands off and Marco Neely picks up the first down on a gain of four. Still plenty of time left for Rutgers as Neely carries again. And he runs into Vincent Walker. That's a gain of only two. Big third down and six for the Scarlet Knights. As they hand it off again and Neely won't get four. No gain on the play. Greg Kelly again on the stop. Rutgers still cannot beat our run defense. The Gophers take over again. First and ten sweep for Jackson. And he stopped again for no gain. Rutgers has done a great job stopping those outside runs. Jackson wants to keep this one inside as he picks up maybe three yards. Third down and six. And the Gophers keep it on the ground. Jackson inside makes a move and picks up a Minnesota first down as they will continue to drain this clock. Hands off Jackson on first down. Big hole in running room. First down, TJ Jackson. One timeout left for Rutgers. This time a fake. Gallagher running left with room and slides. Gain of eight. A first down ends the game. Three receivers from the pistol. It's TJ Jackson up the middle for a go for first down. And that will end this game. It's a 5-0 perfect start to the season for the Minnesota Gophers, who are now 2-0 in Big Ten play. This one was close. A lot closer than I would have liked it to be. But it's still a victory. 17-10 Gophers, they win again. And the player of the game was Reggie Carter, the player whom I believe deserved it. That sack fumble was a huge play, and he was a big part of another great showing from our run defense. Mark O'Neilly did not have very much success, and neither did Wendell Moss, who only had two catches in today's game, and only one was in man coverage against Joe Bennett, who again is locking down opposing number one receivers. On the other hand, I was very pleased with our receivers. Lee James, Clint Porter, Nick Wilkerson, Brandon Jones. Nobody's going to stand out with those 12 catch, 180 yard performances. But combined, they are a very solid unit. They're playing as one right now anyway. They are each making their plays when they're presented opportunities. We just need to stop those forced interceptions. I'm sorry. Anyway, next up for Minnesota, they take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Next time around, it's rivalry week as Minnesota plays Iowa, two undefeated teams here in the Big Ten. And they have a couple more very talented skill position players I'm watching out for when they have the football. However, our defense is still doing a fine job in man coverage, playing a lot of single high safety, and that allows us to bring extra pressure. Although our front four today easily had their best pass rushing performance. While Iowa has a very good tailback and wideout for us to watch out for, their starting quarterback was hurt this week. Lance Stewart, the senior quarterback, suffered a broken hand. And next week, we'll see the first start for Trey Cole, who's only thrown three passes in his college career. From the looks of things, he doesn't have a very dominant arm. It's not very strong, his accuracy needs work, but he's a talented runner. And we're going to have to have somebody in a spy likely this week if he's going to be running a lot. They also have speed in the backfield with Riley Newberry and at wide receiver with Kevin Jacobs, who has four touchdowns this season and is averaging almost 150 yards receiving through three games. We'll see how many targets he gets with the new quarterback in play and against our defense. And by the way, next week we will be making one change to the starting lineup. I'm going to be starting Eric Lemon in the place of Mike Moore. Moore has had his ups and downs throughout the beginning of this season, and I saw a little bit of Lemon today in those 3-3-5 looks. He was basically playing a nickel corner spot, and he was doing a good job in man coverage. One thing about Lemon is he's very good in zone coverage as well, and he's one of our fastest players, period. I like to get that speed on the field and see if he can make some plays for us. He may also be a valuable asset against the speed of Iowa. 
Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of that move to start Eric Lemon for the first time in his career next week. Also next week, Matt Pierre will be good to go after leaving today's game with a concussion. And with that performance he had, which was incomplete obviously, he has fallen out of the Heisman watch. We'll see if a good performance next week can elevate his status back to the top five. Because Matt Pierre definitely deserves some consideration. But also Calvin Hall does as well. Anyway, that's it for week five. Week six is up next. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like and comment below your thoughts on today's game. Let me know which players impressed you the most. Does anybody else deserve some more playing time? Subscribe for more Minnesota Gophers Dynasty to come, and check out the rest of the content on my channel. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.